everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki, and I'm joined here with Zenra. Hello. Uh, what Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is the series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-being to watching every single Shonen Jump anime available to us in English and actually available to the wider public. Um, and our main series that we go through is Gintama. The other series we're still waiting for the perfect time to go through is Kurogo's Basketball. And today we're going to be talking about Gintama, only two episodes, because if things have been weird at my work and I don't know when I start working, so I didn't know how much episodes I, I, I was, I was almost positive we originally wanted to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven episodes, that ain't happening with me not knowing my schedule very well, so two episodes should be enough. So we're going to be talking about two episodes 237 and 238, which is a little tiny arc called the Vacation Arc. Zen, why don't you get us started? So episode 27 starts with another bit about the Gintama live action, uh, but it's all like paper, like a paper house with an action figure on it this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, yeah, we, we used up all the budget, so this is all we have. And then they light it on fire for reasons <laughs> I don't remember. It's- as Shinpachi screams. Um, and then we get into the actual episode, and it's uh, winter, and the Shinsengumi are talking, and they're like, yeah, the um, the dude, uh, Matsudaira, um, yeah, wants us to go on a, a ski trip and take, like, a vacation. And Hijikata's like, nah, we can't, we can't leave Edo undefended. Uh, and they have, like, this philosophical thing, and he's like, I, you know, we have to take care of the people. And then Okita's like, well, why don't you stay back, and then we'll all go <laughs> on the ski trip, uh, and Team Hijikata can stay, and Team Hijikata is only Hijikata. He's the only one on Team Hijikata. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then Matsudaira appears and shoots Kondo in the orange that he was holding in his mouth, <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, if you all don't go on this fucking trip, I'm going to kill you all. I'm trying to be super nice to you right now <laughs> for no reason other than how awesome I am, and you're not going on the trip. Uh... But then it turns out to be work after all. They're not actually going on a relaxing ski trip. They are uh, escorting the Shogun who wants to go on a ski trip. Uh, And then everything uh, seems like it's good. He's snowboarding. And they're like, wow, he's getting a lot of hang time. (laughs) And then he's like tethered to a helicopter so he doesn't fall, I guess, while they're driving him around. Um, And then uh, it they find uh, Kagura, I believe, who is building a Neo Armstrong Cyclone Jet Armstrong Cannon back from the last winter episode. She's yeah. making another one. Um, and then her and Okita get into a big snowball fight, which ends up downing the helicopter that the Shogun is in. It, like, explodes. And uh, Hijikata's trying to get people to help. And Kondo's like, oh my god. Uh, Otai and Shinpachi are here. That's crazy. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Uh, and then the Shogun is dangling from, uh, what do you call those things? The ski lift the, part? Yeah. Or... The, yes. With the ski yeah, lift. He, yeah, he's dangling from the one that Otai and Shinpachi are in, and she's like beating his ass because she thinks he's a pervert because he's just in his Shogun underpants. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he takes all of his clothes off as well to get away from his snowboard because it's limiting his movement ability. Uh, but then she grabs the Shogun and uses the Shogun as a weapon to hit Kondo and launches them both down the mountain as they're, like, sliding down. Uh, and then the Shogun bumps into Gintoki, who's like, oh, it's cool. I'm also a beginner. I know it's hard. And then he gets on the Shogun like a snowboard and leaves and just starts (laughs) snowboarding down the mountain on him. So Hijikata starts chasing him and then jumps on Kondo. Uh, and then they start talking about human boarding. They're they're human boarding down the mountain, uh, and they're out of completely out of control. But then uh, Otai shows up, and she's human boarding on Shinpachi, and she tries to help them. And it just keeps getting like progressively worse and worse as they try to use the uh, penile break, which is to pull on their underpants until their dicks get hard and make a break in the snow. <laughs> but then they go off a like a jump. And they land on the jump, and it makes a disgusting squishing noise <laughs> when they look, and there's just blood everywhere. Pure pain. Pure yeah. pain. It was awful. Um, and then eventually, at the end, 
they like crash because Kagura's in a giant snowball that like rolls into them. And then I think Katsura is also in the snowball. Yes, and he's, he's like, awful. don't uh, worry about the fact that the Shogun is traditionally our most hated enemy. <laughs> don't even stress about that. That's not even a thing. Just chill. It's chill. I'm chill. <laughs> and uh, then they all crash. And then everyone is okay except the Shogun who is gone. And they're like, well, fuck, he's gone. What do we do? And they're like, all right, you know what? We're going to rock, paper, scissors. And then one of us is going to go look for him. And Kondo ends up losing, but he's naked. And so he's like, what do I What do? I do? I have no clothes. And eventually they all agree to give him um, one piece of clothing each. And every single one of them chooses their gloves. <laughs> so he's just got giant gloves as he's like walking away. Uh, and then Katsura is like, here, you know what? I don't want you to die in the snow, so you can have my snowman outfit. And he gives him the snowman suit. And then Kondo grabs him and throws him off of a cliff. And that's how the episode ends. Yes. All right, Zen. How'd you feel about this one? It's pretty funny. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty good start to it. <laughs> It'd been... Um... The intro, the the thing with the little paper one was really... First of all, I, I thought it was really nice for them to actually make a live action one. Because I was like, damn, that looks really nice. And then when they set it on fire, I was me like, I'd be so bummed if I had made that. And then <laughs> and they had yeah, to set it on fire. they had to burn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part about that is that they eventually show... I assume it's because they had to show... You can, For whatever reason, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, this... Someone in the censors had to say, you you have to be shown putting out the fire. <laughs> we can't allow you to yeah, just... We can't just let it burn, I guess. Yes, yeah. we can't just end it that way. So before the episode actually starts, they return to the the, the, ho- the, the, the house of just on fire. And they quickly put it out with like the... Yeah, they extinguish <laughs> it with like a fire extinguisher or something like water. I don't remember. They like sprayed it with yeah, something. Yeah, they did. I wish I could remember. Do you remember who the little toy is? Is on who's on it? I want to say it's, it's Kaniku Man, but I, it's the face is blacked out. I think it's Kaniku Man because it's like a shirtless, really, really buff dude. But yeah. they have a sensor bar over the face. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he's not there when it's on fire. <laughs> it's they... not. No, yeah, it's gone when it's on fire. It's like hmm, we can't actually show <laughs> beloved character Kaniku Man burning <laughs> something like that. Um. I really like that. I like the beginning part here. I really like when uh, Matsudaira shows up and is immediately aggro trying to get them to relax. It is super funny because he's like, I'm going to give you to the count of three to make up your mind. And he goes one and he starts firing immediately. And then Kondo goes, <laughs> why are yeah. you firing? He goes like two and three. He goes like, what happened to two and three? He's like, I don't believe in two and three. The only number a man needs is number one. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, uh, the only number a man needs to get ahead in this world is number one. <laughs> number one. That's really good. And then when he goes to Hijikata and points the gun to him and says, are you going to rest or die? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does he say to Kano? He says, like, um, how about it? Do you want to go to sleep and see tomorrow or do you want to go to sleep forever? <laughs> It's really good. He, I also like the introduction he does because they're immediately going like, I don't know if we want to even do this. And then like Kondo's going to eat his orange, and he just immediately shows up and shoots Kondo in the head. Yeah, it looks like he shoots him in the head. It's like uh, he shoots the orange. Yeah, he ends up shooting the orange. So that's really good. And then the reveal, of course, that it, obviously they're going to be helping the Shogun. Also, that the only reason that he was pushing this is because he likely told him, "I want to go do this," and he was like, "Well." I don't know what to do in this situation, so yeah, you got it. And then he just pour- poured it off on them. Yeah, because he didn't want to take the Shogun skiing. No, t- absolutely terrified. It's really funny when he's got the gun to Hijikata's head, and he's like, I'm just a super nice guy with no <laughs> motives behind what I'm doing. Like, he says that straight up. He does. And it's <laughs> so really funny. funny. It is. Um, when then when they're actually doing the the bits and they're snowboarding, it's also really good. Obviously, the bit with the when they're like, "Oh my god, he has so much airtime and he has insane amounts of air," and then they show that he's actually attached to a helicopter. Yeah, the he's tethered to the, the helicopter. And then I think before he <laughs> lands, they shoot an explosive down on the ground. I don't remember why they did it. Oh, but... so yeah, so they're gonna drop him off, and then they're like, "There's people down there that I don't trust. Those people, get him out of there." So they start <laughs> shooting them with the guns of the helicopter. Okay. And then they're like, okay, we got the people out of there, but 
the ground is all lumpy now and I'm scared he might trip. And so they pull out a rocket launcher and shoot the spot to flatten it back out by blowing it up. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Or uh, that 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 was really good. And he steps out of the explosion. He's like, "Man, that's a lot of fun. I liked it when the the air was on my crotch." And then Kijikata goes, says, "The Shogun wants more airy crotch. Get him back up there." <laughs> and then when they're putting him back in, it goes like, uh, "Are we sure it's okay to show him that this is the way that you snowboard?" He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. He's like, it's starting to scare the other guests. He's like, that's even better. That means that there's even less chance of the Shogun getting hurt. <laughs> so if they leave, that's fine. Um, the other bit I like is when they show up and Kagura says, um, I think, he goes like, there's someone here building a snowman and Okita tries to stop him. And Kagura's like, it's not a snowman. It's a Neo Armstrong Cyclone Jet Armstrong Cannon. And I think I mentioned this. Someone may have brought it up because, like, I actually think that it's been longer than Takasi, uh, not Takasi, than um, Sakamoto. So, yes, yeah, Sakamoto. I think that it's actually been longer <laughs> since the last time we saw a Neo Armstrong Cyclo Jet Armstrong Cannon. I was like, I think you're actually right. I think it's actually been 150 episodes <laughs> since the last time that they brought up uh, the Neo Armstrong Cyclo Jet Armstrong Cannon. So it was fun to see it back here. Yeah, and obviously when they start human boarding, really funny because they they start going down the um as they're going down the slopes, if they're like going like it's at such insane speed because like we want to try and slow them down and do all this, and then when they're actually on them and they're trying because like if you just pull the underwear, it's like a break, and fuck when when Kentucky's VA goes to say the 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 penile uh. Shit, what is it called? The penile break? It goes like, the penile break. He's like, there's a big reverb around the word. <laughs> to try to make it seem like it's something super fancy and, and great and stuff like that. Really good. And then, obviously, when they just completely fucking broke their penis up in the air, that was also really good. Uh, I like when Otai shows up and she's like, oh yeah, to I, I've mastered the art of human boarding. He's like, I think it's because we're siblings that we have such a deep bond that I'm able to do human boarding so naturally. He was like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Everything that you're saying is not something that the siblings would do with each other. She's like, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to get their glasses. Because if you have the glasses, you'll have perfect control over your human board. And then she, like, loses the glasses and she acts as if she lost Shinpachi herself. Yeah. <laughs> And it's funny because I think Gintoki is the one who says that's not Shinpachi, even though he makes that joke all the time. <laughs> even though he does that all the time, yeah. She's so devastated. She's like, Shinpachi, no! Yeah, she's like, scre like slow-mo screams like, Shinpachi! <laughs> it's really good. Uh, and yeah, and then that reveal with uh, Kagura is like, I've come to help, and she's in the, <laughs> she's in the snowball. In the giant snowball, yeah. yeah. And it's like switching between her and Okita, and she's like super like, yeah, I'm going to help you. And then Okita's like, the worst thing that you can have is hope before it all ends. <laughs> it's like the last thing that goes. And then uh, it reveals that Katsura was inside of it as well, and then they tell him, because like, have you ever heard of the penile break? And then I think they do that with Katsura. He's like, hey, hey, what are you doing? Don't do this. I'm your leader. <laughs> No! And it's implied that they break it off there. But yeah, also, like you said, that bit when he's like, when they have him, because like, I know that the Shogun's our natural enemy. <laughs> we have to... so, yeah, when he's like, oh, you know, don't even, don't even stress about it. Don't even think about it. It's totally chill. <laughs> We're totally... having a good time really funny and yeah i like where the the end bit ends here so it was a it was a real good uh start of a funny episode for a good little uh quick arc that we've got here uh i always end up enjoying a lot of the the shogun stuff even though it's it, i think it's because it's literally them treating the nicest dude possible in the shittiest way in imaginable yeah, like absolute shit at all times yes and n usually never suffering any consequences for what if anything the shogun always reflects on his experience with them and says damn i can really grow as a person from this and it's the yeah. fucking... <laughs> it's always like his fault somehow it's always his fault and he's always like mm, i've learned so much and i've appreciated everything here and it's always funny to me that he does 
that he's always like, oh, I've learned so much. Like the the experience that he's had in this situation, he never reflects on it negatively. He never tries to fight back against anyone, and that I think makes it uh, that much better every time they use him because it just allows every single character to just fucking wail on him for various reasons. But yeah, that's episode two thirty seven. I forgot to say the name of that episode was uh, "Please Take Me Skiing." Which is funny, because they don't go skiing. No, they all go snowboarding. Yeah, maybe it's a Japanese thing where in Japan, skiing is also snowboarding. No, because, you know what? I'm going to assume it's something like I'm going to assume it's a cultural thing, that they assume that all skiing is snowboarding. (laughs) Feel free to let me know if if that's not the case. Well, they also say, that actually might be true, because they also say uh, when, when Gintoki gets bumped... Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's okay, I'm a beginner too, so I know that your skis can get away from you. And then he's snowboarding, he's not skiing. Yeah, you're right. It it has to be a case like that. It's like, um... Because I know in certain things of Spanish, it's like, well, we only have one word for that. And we oh, that's all we call it. <laughs> it's not like English where it's like, oh yeah, we call all these different forms of things doing it here. That's a snowboard, that's a ski... That's a whatever, that's a skateboard, that's a whatever. They just go like, yeah, it's just that. And then that's it. That's also what makes me think. But And knowing J- uh, the way J- Japanese words work, it wouldn't surprise me if like that one word just meant like, yo, that's what that is. All forms of like winter board riding activity. Yeah, it went like ice skating. I Like all that would basically be like one word. And it's like based on the context, you know, that's what they mean. And stuff like that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Let's go on to episode 238, which is A Vacation in Disorientation. Go ahead, Zen. Okay, so 238 begins with a really funny bit where um, it replays the events of the last episode toward the ending. And Katsura gets pushed off the cliff and then his scream plays throughout the beginning of the opening song <laughs> so the opening song is playing while katsura is screaming in the background as he falls <laughs> off the cliff it's very funny it's very um good. and so now they're trying to survive because they're like lost in the mountains now um hijikata and okita make like an igloo and they're like haha idiots you're not gonna you're not gonna be warm in there dumbass <laughs> like you it's it's cold in there that's snow what is he? He says, uh, you're trying to hide from the snow in the snow, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually, um, Okita lets Kagura and Gintoki try it. And they're like, oh my god, this is the it's so warm. This is the greatest thing I've ever done. <laughs> they say it's like being back in their mother's womb. Oh my god. But yeah, the face um, that he has too, where he's just like, oh. Yes. So yeah, warm. they have like the, the sparkly anime eyes and they're like, uh, like blushing and everything they're like mm-hmm. loving every second of it it's really funny mm-hmm. um and so they eventually destroy it i think because uh they they get into an argument with them about how they want their shelter back um and then katsura is like hey there's a cave here but bigfoot lives there and they're like how do you know that bigfoot lives here bigfoot is not real and he's like yes it is look at that sneaker it's huge <laughs> and then he goes and sleeps in the sneaker uh, and so they decide they're going to ditch him and leave him. But then Otai also found a cave. And she's like, guys, look, I found a cave. And then they're like, what the fuck are all of these things? And she's like massacred this giant set of monsters. Uh, and it turns out they're chupacabras. So she's like, yeah, it's the chupacabras. I got, I took care of all these chupacabras. <laughs> and she concocts some crazy story about like going and defeating the chupacabra forces in some ancient city. Or whatever, like I don't even. It, it reminds me of the the city from Sonic Adventure where Knuckles people's live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. But uh, they all ditch her because they're like, we're not going into that thing. We're not doing that. And so then um, they're walking in the snow, and it's like blizzarding. And she's like, guys, we should go back to the Chupacabra cave. Look, I made fried Chupacabra, and it's like the same nasty burnt food she always makes. Mm-hmm. And I. What if Gintoki said something that killed me? He was like, everything she touches turns to dark matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really funny. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, well, the snow has probably put our fire out by now. Uh, and then they all are like, yeah, um, 
the Shogun and Kondo are, are definitely dead. They are for sure dead. Uh, and then a bear shows up, and they're like, oh my god, it's a bear, and they all go to run away. And Katsura goes, guys, we'll never outrun the bear. You have to play dead. And he hurls himself <laughs> off a cliff. And Gintogi, like, slow-mo, like, slides out to grab him. And he's like, you're going to be real, dead." <laughs> and then Hijikata goes, no, what you have to do is look the bear square in the eyes and, like, just slowly back away. And then he gets stabbed in the back by Okita with a branch. He's like, oh, no, Hijikata, I thought you were a bear, so I stabbed you. And then Okita gets stabbed in the back by a branch by Kagura. So they're both, like, laid out on the ground. And then, um... Eventually, it's revealed that the bear is the Shogun, who's wearing bear skin. I guess he killed that bear. I don't know how he did. I think they, 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 the they, they, they said he found it in the, the cabin that he found. Oh, that's right. In the cabin. That's right. It, and then, and then, like, yeah. It, um... That bearskin stinks. It's really awful. Can he take it off? <laughs> and so he does. And then they're like, oh man, uh, his underpants must also stink because they were in the bear suit for so long. He needs to take those off too. And he does. And then I think they're like, oh my god, I think he stinks. And he's like sniffing his armpits. And they're like, please stop being mean to him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> because like he's casually smelling his armpits. He's like doing the whole motion. He's like, is <laughs> It's a thing dudes do when they don't know if they smell or not, where they're just, like, moving their arms, and he's, like, trying to, like... Yeah, he looks like he's trying to stretch, but he's, like, sniffing himself. <laughs> and they're like, please stop being mean to him. And then it shows him, like, with one tear in his eye. Uh, And then they try to decide, like, who's gonna help warm the Shogun up, and they all, like, ref don't want to do it, because he's just wearing, like, his dick is out. And, uh... Then they try to, like, cover him up, but they give him a turtleneck. And he's like, why would you give him a turtle? That's, like, the only thing that we needed to cover is not covered by that. And Okita goes, don't worry. The, the down there has its own turtleneck. And he's, like, <laughs> smiling at the camera. And there's no reaction. Because, like, you know, normally when someone makes a joke in Gintama, everyone's like, oh, my God. Like, they're screaming about it. Yeah. Uh, Okita's looking at the camera and smiling, and Hichikata goes, why are you grinning? That was not funny. And they just <laughs> move on to the next joke. <laughs> Which was, I thought was extremely funny. Um, and then they go to, like, huddle up with the, the Shogun, and then uh, he ends up getting, like, launched into the the rescuers who are coming to find them yeah he and because they they spin him around because all the dudes don't want to be facing his dick so that's enough to just completely send him <laughs> into the air <laughs> spinning Uh, and then from from there, it, it reveals that he still really likes snowboarding, but now he can only do it the way that he was treated, which is being launched into the air and then taking off all his clothes. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Did I lose you, Zen? No, I'm still here. Okay. For a second there. Because I think I may have accidentally lost you for like a brief bit when we talked about getting to the cabin. When he went from a bear... And then uh, it looked like he was going to attack Shinpachi, and then he actually got, like, drop-kicked off of it by Otai when it reveals that it's actually him. All right, then. All right, we should be good. Uh, Discord's been acting a little bit weird right now, so I don't know <laughs> what's going on. But just to be sure. All right, that's the end of episode 238. How'd you feel about it, Zen? Very funny. Good episode. Shogun stuff is always funny. I like when he's stoically crying. Um... <laughs> I like when Okita makes the joke and Hijikata's like, that was stupid. And they just move <laughs> on. Like, they don't acknowledge it at all. Uh, very good episode. Yeah. I w it was really funny when they're doing the, when they're doing the spin around and Gintoki says to Katsura, now's your chance to take down the Bakafu. <laughs> and he points it to him, Dick, first. And he's like, there, go, Katsura. <laughs> take him out. <laughs> and he's been... <laughs> He spins it back. It's really good. 
Yeah, this is a, a, a really funny episode. Um, there's also like a the an early bit early on, which funny enough, it reminds me of that one the, the even the one panel. I don't know if the anime has actually adapted it yet. You know that bit where Anya from Spy X Family, where she drops something, is like, "Oh no, I've dropped this." And she's, uh-huh. like, looking like, oh, man, do it. They do that same bit, but with food, because Okita says, like, I'm not an animal like you. I don't eat food off the ground. And so she drops chocolate. Like, this chocolate thing is like, oh, dear, what has happened? It's here. And then both Gintoki and Shimpachi are fighting over it. And then she joins it and goes, like, actually, that's my food. Get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Ijikata drops the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise. And Okita and he- picks it up and throws it off the cliff. <laughs> Which also reminds me of when they did this last time when they were doing the cat bit when they were cats when Oki- <laughs> when he dropped the mayonnaise for the cats and he was like oh yeah mayonnaise he was like nobody wants your your shitty food. <laughs> Which is really good yeah it's a uh, it was a fantastic two episode arc I really do love the Shogun every time he shows up. Um, Especially because his his reaction of like trying to save everyone as well, because everyone was so worried about him in the previous episode, and then he's the one who basically saved everyone by actually finding. Yeah, the he's cabin. the one that saved the day. Yeah, and then there's also the bit where it's so after he gets like hit by Otai off the top of the cliff, um, he reveals that he can't remember it, and then like Kentoki makes up a lie to basically absolve them of everything. It was like, oh yeah, we got trapped here because you wanted to go fight Chupacabras and Bigfoot, and you know, and we were all humoring you, and now we're lost in the snow, and because of a blizzard. And then the Shogun was like, I did that. It it, it was it was my my foolish ambitions <laughs> is what has caused this. Let the gods punish me with this blizzard. <laughs> And then he's immediately like, see, now we're off the go. <laughs> they immediately goes like, see, look at that. It was so smooth. We're not in trouble anymore. But his immediate reaction is like, he's heartbroken. He's absolutely like, I can't believe I've done this. I've doomed us all. <laughs> oh, so good. Um. So, yeah, that was, that was a great uh, two episode arc there. <laughs> And unfortunately, that's all uh, Gintama for this week, but hopefully next week we will be back with... I should be back to my regular uh, schedule thingy. Why well, as regular as shit looks for in my work, my job. But I should have stuff where I know set in stone they're not going to drop me off and be like... They're not going <laughs> to... Literally at my work, I woke up one time to a text saying, please help. <laughs> And I had just woken up. <laughs> Please help. In so many things, like, there's an emergency. And I was just like, what? <laughs> okay, let me go turn on my computer real fucking quick. I'm waking up, but you got it. And I was basically all... And it's always like this whenever it's slow in one part. Uh, it picks up in another one, and it makes it very annoying. But we should be able to come back and talk about episodes 239 through 243. Which should feature two tiny arcs. The Scandal Arc and the Host Club Arc. And then a, a standalone episode. And then after that, it should be another uh, four-episode arc with the Forney Arc. And then we'll be back to doing... It's going to be a lot of episodes all at once again as we get closer to the end of this one. Um, we're getting pretty close to one that I know for a fact is going to be a pretty big one when we get there. We're, get, we're inching closer and closer to it. So look forward to that hopefully next week. But that's the end of the show and archive, everyone. Uh, if you want to see more Zen, you can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Uh, Zen, what's going on in Shonen Jump lately? Uh, so much stuff that I would spoil a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we, we talk about it right now for we, people we, that read things. <laughs> Yeah, we can't talk. Otherwise, we're going to go on another 20 minute like, oh, yeah, this is supposed to be a very quick 30 minute. And then we go on for 20 more minutes. <laughs> and then we have to the dolphin noise quite a bit as mm-hmm. well if we do yeah. that. So stuff is happening. <laughs> very is stuff. getting real. I'll say that much. Yeah. Uh, I need to myself catch up with um, uh, Sakamoto Days because they just recently released the they said it's coming in anime and then everyone's like yo and then they said Netflix and then everyone went no <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, I saw that Netflix tag and I was like oh shit yeah and I was like well 
it's DOA. A, uh, that's very unfortunate. It, 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 it's so sad that when it comes to Netflix, it, it there's like one example, and it's the one that's currently going on because it's the Dungeon Meshi one is a Netflix anime, and they do it episodic, like weekly. What they should have done for JoJo. <laughs> yeah, what they absolutely should have done. Yeah, what they should have done. JoJo. Yeah, what they should have done for JoJo, they did for this one, and it's working because like it's making me want to go see it. Because every every week, there's more people going like, "Oh man, this episode." I'm like, "Hey, you know what? Maybe it's I have a Netflix, and this is the why we maybe I can go check this out." <laughs> Which is how an anime is supposed to kind of be built. So I guess we have to wait and see. I would really like for us to do a Shonen Archive on Sakamoto Days, and it's not a bummer. <laughs> Yeah, as long as it's not a mess, then that would be awesome. Yes, it would be awesome. If it was a mess, then we're going to have the world's saddest Shonen Archive. Just raw depression Shonen Archive. Yeah, because we both really like Sakamoto Days. You were the one who got me onto it, and then when I read I was like, holy shit, I should have been reading this from the start. Yeah, Sakamoto goes hard. It does, 100%. And I also still need to catch up on uh, Kagurabachi as well. And by catch up, I mean actually start. But read it, yeah. <laughs> read it to begin with. Yes, exactly, I do. Um, but that's going on with Zen. And as far as me, well, if uh, on the channel, as always, there's a lot of Fago stuff. I started reading uh, Fago stories for people, so I still think that the best way to experience the Fago story is to read it yourself. But if you want me to read it for you, <laughs> then... <laughs> There are plenty of videos of there out there for me. Currently, we are uh, currently I'm going reading through Trom, and those videos are not. <laughs> they're very hard to make because <laughs> it's a lot of reading, and then it's a lot of me editing out words because all the characters comes from various countries. So I'm just like, I think most recently I'm like, is this how the fuck you say this Turkish word? I don't know. I've never had to say a Turkish word until this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably really annoying, isn't it? It it, it is, and so uh, <laughs> enjoy that. It's a lot. Of, I already fail at basic Japanese words and English words. To be fair, so you can only imagine my paranoia of going like, am I saying this country's words right? It basically all went downhill when I learned that uh, Kukulain is not pronounced Kukulain; it's Kukalin. And from then on, Kukalin. I was like. What? Yes, it is. It is not how you it, like. I know because you're thinking it's like it's like a ch when it goes like that. No, it's Kuk, it's Kukalin. That's how you say it. <laughs> that's how you're supposed to oh, say man, it. Oh man, that's the, depressing. It is. Uh, obviously, everyone knows the queen. The the famous example of Queen Maeve, even though it's spelled M E D B, it's pronounced Maeve. Um, and so there's a lot of words like that where I'm just like, is that how you're supposed to actually say this? That's insane. I never uh, I never knew it until this. So there's a lot of recordings of me going like, um, fuck, and god damn it, and son of a bitch. And I think most recently I said, Sherlock Holmes, you British motherfucker, why do you talk this way? <laughs> you said you British motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, true, though. True, though. It's true, because it was like, it's English, but it's like slightly different, so I'm like, that's not how you say it. God damn it, fucking British asshole. <laughs> As I try and I change it differently, but yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, so you can check that out, and I'll be sure to release some of the other videos of me playing various other stuff whenever I have the time and remember. There's still some fighting game stuff that I need to upload from uh, that on. Uh, but those files are very big, so YouTube was like, I cannot upload this quickly, because there's a lot of shit going on in this video. <laughs> there's a lot of movement, yeah. Yeah, uh, us playing Melty Blood, for that one for sure, they're like, listen man, there's a lot of fucking shit going on here, and you wanted this nice quality, so this file is fucking huge, <laughs> and it takes a lot to process. I'm like, alright, fine, do your thing. But yeah, um, and maybe at some point I'll see if I can... Uh, maybe play some of the new Thousand Year Door remake as well. Oh yeah, that just dropped. Yeah, it? it did just drop. There's a lot of things that dropped uh, because uh, Akuma also dropped on Street Fighter Six. 
and I've uh-huh. got I have the yep. DLC for that now. So uh, rip to my boy DJ. Somehow, out of all the problem characters in the game, Ken didn't really get hit that bad. <laughs> JP did get hit bad, but then they decided that uh, actually it was DJ's power. He was too powerful, so they nerfed his power pretty hard. Um, and they removed some utility from some of this stuff. And that was my main dude. So now I have to go look at maybe some other dudes. Now you like, have to learn Akuma like everybody else. Now I have to learn Akuma. Maybe I'll actually go around and learn Lily. Because I heard that they made Lily not shit. And I love Lily as a concept, as a tiny Mexican woman. Um, but she's a terrible... She was terrible pre-patch. She has a DP that does not have any invincibility. <laughs> I think is the, the way it goes. So she just has no corner pressure at all. But now they added the ability to um, do drive gauge on wake up. That's invincible. So maybe that'll help a little bit. A lot of stuff to go through. And then, I'm, of course, I'm also still going through Final Fantasy fourteen as well. I've got basically a month um, before the new before basically the new DLC drops and I lose access to my yokai watch. <laughs> Uh, yep. ability to get my mount yeah so, you better be you better get moving yeah i just started heaven's sword and i have to uh heaven's ward my bad i keep calling it heaven's sword it is not heaven's sword you still have to make it to storm blood. i still have to make it the storm blood which is the next expansion but i still need to beat heaven's sword and then beat the thing that's after heaven's sword <laughs> yep there's a, there's a lot so i have basically a month and then also the fago anniversary is in a month so i'm also going to be crazy busy with that so i damn i, I am struggling i am struggling the fact that there are any videos of shonen archive coming out <laughs> is a testament to my dedication to getting this done <laughs> and then i'm also going on a trip to vegas in october for magic con I'll be there in October 27th or something. So I have to start planning for that stuff as well. And then also thinking in the back of my head, I do 13 nights of Halloween and I don't plan to stop it this year. <laughs> Even though I will not be gone. I will be gone from my computer for a good bit of it. Um, I'm going through. Uh, it's, I'm doing a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> man is going through it right now. It is. Uh, I had to step back a little bit because I think originally when I was doing the story stuff for Forgo, I said, these are going to come out daily until the story is finished. And then I did that for the Bunyan event. And then I said, I want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so for this one, I said, Monday through Friday, all day, man. <laughs> I, I need my weekends back because <laughs> it's a lot of editing. Yeah, that's fair. Yes. But yep. Yeah look forward to all that so there you go that's what's happening with us join us next week for more shonen archive uh, as always thank you very much for watching if you want to show support the best way to do it is always to watch you can leave a like or a comment it doesn't really matter as long as you watch it we're good with that uh thankfully for me like i said eric say every single time Fago is what makes and funds the, <laughs> the videos on my channel so that allows me to be super cool and lax with this stuff so Zen, why don't you say goodbye? Goodbye, everybody. Gunshot rings out! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget the gunshot intro. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>